Welcome everyone to episode 297 of Aussie Tech Heads on the 5th of July 2012 and we're raring to go. Uh, Will's talking about his tax return. Hey Will, how you doing? <laughs> hey, how we doing? <laughs> yeah, just I'm just having my own conversation in the chat room, just work around me. <laughs> Alright, um, yeah, so it is that time of the year, the, the tax returns are going in, flying in. Now I've heard that the, once again there's no e-tax lodging on the Mac. The software has not is not available still. The tax office doesn't seem to really care. Uh, but apparently, late news is, late news is, and I did write this down, I haven't actually looked there, but just late news is there's a program or a site called it was Wine Something, if anyone can help me out. Only someone just told me this this afternoon. It's called um, Wine Skim. Wine Skin. Have a look at that one. Yeah, it's got something to do with lodging your tax return for a Mac. But anyway, but enough of that. Let's get the show started. Uh, welcome to the lounge. The lounge always joins us live. Com every Thursday night at around about the 7.30, 7.40 mark for the show live recording, which then is posted up on YouTube at uh, video.aussietechheads.com.au. And also, if you want to join in the show live and have a chat to us, it's uh, Skype handle is Aussie Tech Heads and paper.aussietechheads.com.au. And also thanks to uh, Brad and the gang from techwebcast.info. Is, uh, for their, for allowing us to replay their, their show, just to get you guys into the mood uh, on the on the live stream, just before the rec- live recording of the show. So cheers, guys. All right, uh, and in the wings, as well as will we have Eric. Hello, Eric. Hi, mate. How are you going? Hello, everyone. Good, thank you. Good, thank you. Uh, did you watch the game last night? State of Origin, of course, I'm talking about. Uh, I did. I did indeed. And uh, once again, refereeing, not good. Yes, I haven't read any. Yeah. Haven't read any of the New South Wales papers, but I guess that the, is this the uh, the Shepherd try? The Shepherd, not a try. Well, among, yes. among other things, never I mean, a try. <laughs> never a there try. Was just that, you know. Yeah. So who knows what's going on with that? But anyway, that's all said and done. You know, it's uh, it was one point. So good on the Queenslanders, eight in a row. It's there. Uh, seven in a row. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> it's not going to get to eight. Let's let's get let's get sorted. <laughs> Never going to get to eight. Uh, all right. So, uh, if you if anyone out there wants to contact us and send us an email, you can uh, Glenn, Will, or Eric. Eric with a K at AussieTechHeads.com.au. Uh, we'll give you a Twitter. The Twitters will come up on screen. I'll give those to you later at the end of the show. Towards the end of the show. Uh, big news tonight. Big launch tonight. Uh, new thing happening. But uh, we might as well get into that straight away. Is that all right with you guys? Go for it. Yeah, have fun. Oh, good, thanks. <laughs> Your baby. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, so through the week, or well, I've been working on this for a little while, and, um, yeah, so I'm pleased to announce that now you can sign up with uh, with us and get some, well, that's not a very good graphic, is it? But you can get some um, get some uh, hosting. I've, I've, set, I've sorted it all out. I've... Uh, Put up uh, hosting, web page hosting, and domain registration and transfers, so you can get it get it all sorted with the with the good old Aussie tech heads. And um, yeah, so I've got a couple of plans. I thought we'd just go through them to tell you what it's all about. So uh, if you don't know what web hosting is, well, what it is is every web page has to have a host somewhere. And um, the good thing about this our hosting is that you can actually install what they call like uh, scripts or certain programs to get you up and running straight away, like WordPress. Uh, Joomla, if you're familiar with some of those, uh, you just hit one click install and it installs it up on your space. You, you navigate to your to your URL that you've or your domain name that you've just registered for, and there you go. It's all there. There's a front end which the which the public sees and a back end which you see, which you uh, go through and you know and publish it, put the content in there, provide the content for it. <coughs> so uh, so if you want to have a look at the hosting, it's at hosting.aussietechheads.com.au. So, and of uh, course, it allows uh, for blogging and things like that as well. It does, yes, it does. Well, WordPress is that, yeah, that is the blog. There's uh, e-commerce installations. Uh, look, I can give you if I can get you into a. I'll give you another couple of. I'll see if I can capture this page here. Just for the uh, the benefit of the the people listening, um, what's where can they go to find all about it? Yeah, they can go to hosting.aussietechheads.com.au. So, uh, there you go. There you go. That's right. So, uh, yeah. So, look, a part of the part of the um, services, you know, anywhere from a little, a small little account from five hundred meg, uh, five ninety nine a month, and business accounts nine ninety nine a month, gives you like pretty huge four gig of web space and um, add thirty gig traffic. 
So look, that that's that's for a fair size web page, like uh, four gig of web space. Like, you know, web pages are uh, in generically and and the small you, everyone you know aims to have it. The smaller web page, the better, because it's you know it takes that's faster to load. So four gigs a hell of a lot of space there. Uh, you'd have to be running some sort of massive database, maybe. Geez, a lot of survey results or something, but it'd have to be a fair bit. But um, a question, um, Glenn. Yes, I'm assuming that uh, on the pages that you post there, and I'll I'll, I'll I'll tell you why I'm asking this question. Um, are you able to embed YouTube videos? Oh on yes, the sites that you create on your hosting thingy. Yes, yes, you are. So, so what happens is, yeah. So if you you've loaded up your WordPress. Um, software up to the to the site and then yeah instead of like you don't host the video on the site like oh well, you could if you wanted to but you'd soon run out of uh, you'd run out of space that's well, that's right. the, that was my next thing because Marzi on the chat just said uh, he needs um, videos to host he needs a site to host his videos but he'd he'd rip through that bandwidth straight away Marzi you're better off hosting up to YouTube because the bandwidth is free yep and um, embedding the video into the website hosted by Glenn, and that way you will not chew through your bandwidth, but people still get to see videos. That's and just right. bear in mind too, there's more than just YouTube if you don't want to give all your details to Google, because some people don't. Fair um, enough. You know, there's Vimeo, there's Monster, there's a whole heap. You know, even Facebook these days um, has video support. So, you know, anything you can, you can that has an embed code, you yep. can use. Yeah. Yep. So, and the good thing about it is because, you know, we're all a pretty, bit of a, a good little community here. Like, you you want to, you don't want the YouTube logo coming up on your videos. Hey, send me an email. I'll tell you where to host it for free and, and use someone else's bandwidth. And then, as Eric said, just link to it, embed it, whatever you want to do. But there's heaps of options out there. Um, look, even if you were to uh, host your site over in the U.S., uh, U.S. of uh, generically and pretty much they've got bigger plans because the data transfer is cheaper and all that sort of stuff over there. Uh, even if you were to host over there, you'd still if your site become popular, you would still smash through that bandwidth if you're hosting videos. And plus, even on your own site, yeah, that's right. And even so, because um, this is shared hosting, this is uh, so this is the same as um, shared hosting wherever it is around the world. There's limitations on uh, say like when we first started doing the podcast. It was only 40 meg, but no one was getting the full file because I was putting it up on a shared host because, you know, unlimited disk, uh, disk space, unlimited bandwidth. I went, oh, yeah, this will be cool. This will host everything. But, um, but, yeah, everyone could not download the full 40 meg file because the, the server was timing out. I was using too much of the server space so, uh, and the server processing. So uh, they limit it. So you've you got to host your media off um, off site, YouTube, uh, wherever else that was just mentioned before, or send me an email. We'll we'll get something sorted. But uh, yeah, sign up there. You can sign up, register your domain name, transfer your domain name. Uh, there's one click uh, installs of different stuff. It's uh, through the soft the 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 softer Q. I can't even say. I just call it soft delicious. That'll do. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all through a, a control panel, which is called cPanel. And, uh, yeah, so it's all pretty good. You get FTP accounts, databases, add-on domains, park domains, subdomains. Uh, yeah, there's, there's heaps of stuff there. Um, OpenX, MyBB, which is a bulletin board you can hook up, uh, throw up there, you know, instantly accessible to the world. You just, just tidy up the back end with your name and, you know, contacts and all that sort of stuff. Lime Survey, I've used Lime Survey. That is, that's an excellent little script that you can put up there. Um, that is a very, very powerful survey uh, tool, uh, with, which has got very, very intricate and great logic. So, you know, like as you go through the surveys, you know, if, if A equals B and then if the guy didn't pick C on the question before, then it would skip to question D up here only if, if question A three questions ago was answered. So it's very, that, that Lyme survey is great. That is very, very um, uh, um, intense, <laughs> shall we say. Uh, Magento, online shopping cart. No more, no more to be said about that. And Joomla, yeah. WordPress, and Drupal. They're all content management systems. Joomla is what the Aussie tech head sites run off. Uh, yeah, so it's all good. It's all good. Well, so, I'll be coming across with a few of my sites, Glenny. Oh, good stuff. No worries. Good stuff. No worries. And there's also always support. There's ticketed support. You just uh, sign, you know, send us, send us the ticket away and uh, got any problems, I'll answer it. Easy. Easy. So uh, good stuff. So hopefully go and have a look at that, hosting.aussietechheads.com.au. And as the year progresses, there'll be more stuff coming. I've got more plans, more stuff. So stay with us. All right. Let's, um, any other questions? 
with that, no, I think that's no. probably covered just about everything, isn't it? Oh, thanks for thanks for Cam who road tested it. He um signed up and uh, gave me some feedback on the whole thing. He said it was a an easy process, five minute process. Uh, PayPal, sweet as easy peasy, Japanese. Good oh. stuff. Uh, yeah. So if there's something, if there's a domain name we we don't have there to register, shoot me an email and we'll go oh, and get it. Oh, that's the other thing. We'll what it. payment credit cards do you accept? Whatever PayPal does. Oh, like I said, that'd be Visa, Mastercard. Yep. Yep. Whatever. So it's just it's just a PayPal gateway uh, at this stage. Right. Uh, right. I don't think there's any real need to go to go to the like NAB gateway or anything like that. Uh, maybe if I was if I was smashing the smashing the accounts, you know, like getting a thousand a week, maybe the PayPal fees might be a bit too expensive then. I might look at other alternatives. But no, nah, it's all yeah, um yeah. PayPal. Just PayPal. And okay. or or instant setup. So as soon as you pay, your account's set up. As soon as you pay your domain your domain pretty much is set up. Uh, transfer domain uh, depends on where it's already at, but you know, it probably doesn't really take too much longer than, um, oh, geez, 24 hours. Mine normally went off transfer before, they're only, you know, half two hours, something like that. No, not long at all, but yeah, it's all, it's all there. Um, yeah, so if you ever wanted to have a, your own web page, even with e commerce, you know, um, you just learn how to use the software, it's free, you just learn how to use it, and away you go. Away you Good. go. Excellent. Oh. All right, but the um, so the other real reason that we're here tonight is to go through the news stories of the past week, and so yes, the state of origin we've mentioned, but also a birthday. Oh, and something we didn't mention last week, uh, last episode was iPhone birthday, five years old. So um, five years, yeah. Happy belated birthday to the iPhone, and uh, this week. That's right. So this is just just a, just quick. It's just a uh, ABC's 80th birthday. ABC, you know, Australian Broadcasting Corporation, uh, 80 this week. So, um, 80. 80. Yeah, and Kerry O'Brien's been there from the beginning. Yeah, he probably has too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, I've got a little, there we go, little birthday ABC. Whee. Yeah, so, um, yeah, look, look, over the years, a lot of good shows on the ABC, and uh, I'm sure there's uh, a lot more to come. All right, let's get started into some, some chunky stories. I don't know, where, does anyone have any preference where to start? You or, start. Oh, let's, you go. let's just start with Microsoft, shall we? Because uh, it was it's a bit of a light, a light story week this week. I felt I don't know about you guys, but there wasn't too much going on. No, it wasn't much going on. The just calm a, before the storm. Yeah, just the normal rubbish. There's all, obviously uh, iPhone five rumors and release date yeah. rumors, and I don't know. I just don't even bother with them anymore. Just you know, wait till they're. Because it's just rumors. It just doesn't mean anything. That's right. Just wait till they're there, and you know, and then we'll tell you. Uh, Microsoft unveils the uh, 40 US dollar Windows 8 upgrade. Now, as you know, uh, we've said before that if you buy a Windows 7 machine, you can upgrade for like, $15, you know, within the, the certain the pre-buy period here. Before I like, buy a Windows 7 machine now, upgrade for $15 to Windows 8. But apparently now, Microsoft has unveiled this $40 Windows 8 upgrade from XP, Vista and 7. So that for those machines, not bad. yeah. So those, for those machines that were bought outside of the uh, this this update, uh, or the period, you know, um, the deal kicks off when Microsoft launches Windows 8 later this year, and uh, it will it offers the most advanced retail version of Windows 8 Pro as the upgrade. It, its announcement follows the. Uh, one, yeah, as I said before. So that's that's not a bad deal. Uh, the deal is likely to be good through to 31st of January next year, 2013. So surprisingly, there are still XP users out there. Um, because there's another little article that I grabbed because of that. But uh, yeah, so I, I can't see why you would not want to upgrade to Windows 8 if you had an XP machine. Well, um, I've still got two XP systems. One was the Media Center and one's my netbook. Yeah, so are you? But are you happy with XP, or are you going to upgrade? Well, for the netbook, I couldn't. Uh, I mean, it barely runs Windows Seven, so mm. I couldn't really see it being successful running Windows Eight. So it's pretty much got to stay XP. Yeah. What, um, what the media of, center? Yeah, I don't know. I have to play with Windows Eight a bit more yet. What sort of uh, specs is your little netbook? It's one of the old uh, old Asus EPCs. The thing's bulletproof, you know, completely reliable, and just, it just keeps going. But uh, obviously, it's getting old now. But still, it's um, you know, it, yeah. well, it seems a waste it's, to 
it seems, you know, to, no point wasting a perfectly good machine. But it'd be mm. interesting. I might put Windows 8 on it out of curiosity, see if it if it actually works. I don't even know. Yeah, well, I've got uh, Windows 7 on my laptop. When I bought it, it came with uh, XP. And look, Windows 7 ran extremely well. And as you know, I've just recently put the Windows 8 uh, uh, pre-release version on it, and it's running extremely well. And, and this is on an XP machine, so it's only a little laptop. It's not the fastest thing in the world either. I think it even might be about, doesn't say what it is on the front here, but I think it might only be about a gigahertz processor. Oh, 1.6, sorry. I think it's a 1.6. Would that be right? Yeah, my netbook's a 1.6 Atom. Yeah. So, you know, if it's, if it's got, um, if it's got uh, win XP on it, you'll be right. But uh, according to Net Applications, a US firm that tracks browser and operating systems, uh, used uh, operating system use by monitoring the number of unique users who visit 40,000 websites of its customers. Windows 7 is powering 41.6% of computers, and their uh, and Windows XP, which is 11 years old, is powering 43.6%. So XP is still <laughs> is is still out there. It is still popular and favourable. But that uh, Windows 7 is expected to overtake the XP uh, this month. So uh, XP, see you later. Well, yeah, I mean, mainly because I think they've the ending support f or they're about to end support for XP. So that'll... But then again, I mean, look at a lot of government agencies, for example, their entire rollout is still XP because they've got a base system or their they're dumb terminals and they all run XP. They've got a preloaded, you know, all on... That they just uh, ghost everything on there and they haven't got to mm. worry about it because they're not at work. So I guess a lot of that statistic is corporations and governments, things like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, that's right. A lot of governments and businesses, they're, they're hard to uh, to move along. Well, I suppose it costs them a lot of money, doesn't it, all these licenses? So, um, but, uh, yeah, so why, well, why would they, why would the business and that, why are they keen to upgrade to Windows 8 if they've already gone to Windows 7? I, Especially... Especially when you consider a lot of them would be running the uh, Cisco um, dumb terminals and things like that, which are really low spec, like their, you know, three and four hundred megahertz processor dumb terminals. You know, for them to go up another operating system, they've got to basically refit their entire operation. So, you know, I, I think that's not going to happen, at least not for a while. Mm. Yeah. So anyway, so I can't believe there's so many XP machines out there. <laughs> To be honest, like we've got. But none. look at Windows ninety five. I mean, Windows ninety five hung around for up until a few years ago. It was still up in the top of the rankings regularly. So, yeah, yeah, sad, well, that's, yeah. sad but true. It is sad but true. It is sad. It's probably all those machines that Steve Gibson's got in his little cupboard. No <laughs> security. security. He's all got them all pumping away inside the in the closet there. Didn't, didn't he buy like fifty-seven blackberries so that when they die, he he just uses another one, so he hasn't got to worry about finding something else. Oh, oh yeah, know. nothing like nothing like him, Steve Gibson, to keep up with what's going on. Yeah, I, w I wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past him. But uh, Eric, have you dabbled your little toes into Windows Eight yet? No, not going to. Well, I did when they first came out with the um, what do you want to call that? Um, the first developer preview. The beta. You know, a year ago, so the beta. The, or the alpha. But um, beta. Yeah. I installed it, don't like it. Yeah, don't why like is that? It. I couldn't be bothered. The other, Seriously, the other week, I was actually going to say, you know what, I'll put it on. I've got a laptop here that's not doing anything. Mm. And um, I sat down and I thought, you know what, no, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I, I just couldn't be bothered going through that. The hassle. hassle and trying to work out where the start button was. Yeah, oh, but, I, but you know, you get, you, you got to get used to these things. But I suppose... Well, that's the other thing too. Like, like even with my systems here, all of my systems have a CD or a DVD ghost. So as soon as I've installed a system, got it to the point I want it, um, I just do a ghost image onto a DVD. So every couple of months when there's a problem, hmm. I can just format it, throw the, the ghost image on and have a fully running system in 20 minutes. Yeah, that's the way to go. Or uh, look, my home server backs up as well. Backs up the the operating system and the drive. Never had an issue. Never had to restore. So I guess it goes all right. I guess it goes all right. Um, all right. Let's. Uh, what else have we got going here? Anyone? Anyway, you guys? I know. Will you've just got home from work, so you can. You probably don't have too many stories there. Yeah, I've got a few stories. Um, a few interesting ones. One's just a little bit funny. I don't know if you guys are aware, but 
the Google campus has uh, statues at the front, and, and lately they've been of their Android releases. You know, um, there's been ice cream sandwich and and frozen yogurt and all the other Android releases. Well, they had a jelly bean statue, which was a really nifty looking little, uh, well, jelly bean, I guess, full of baby jelly beans. Right. Well, I had a couple of really hot days over there, and the <laughs> head fell off. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Just like so, the Android operating system. <laughs> oh, no. So that was marvellous. They, uh, yeah, they, you know, tried yeah. to... Yeah. Tried to um, Oh, there we go. Jelly bean statue overheat. Loses its head. <laughs> it's, it's, you, know, you kind of feel sorry for them in some respects because... Oh, they, yeah, they know. tried their best. Well, what was it made out of? What? But it shows you how hot it was over there. Well, I don't know. Plastic, as far as I knew. Was but, it, made um, out, it was one big jelly bean or something. And But apparently the thing is there's little jelly beans on the inside of it. Um, and... They what's happened now that the head's fallen off is people are stealing all the little Android filled <laughs> jelly beans. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> well, so. you, you know it's it's uh, Android's not the only ones that have been having a bit of an issue. <laughs> did you see, did you see the uh, the iPhone explosion? No, I heard about that. Now, Sounds like my media center. Well, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, hang on, I'm just going through my little stories here to see if I can find it here we go here it is now yeah, it wasn't like a, a uh yeah a guy was walking down the street or something yeah so I'll, I'll tell you about it in a sec it's a there is a video i'm just trying to pull this video pull this video i don't know how well you're going to see this but he's just in his car he's in his truck what did, what happened he yeah so up. this 17 year old just exited his vehicle and he was walking to another destination uh, when smoke started streaming from his pocket. The incident is the second <laughs> <laughs> reported spontaneous combustion of a smartphone this year. Well, it wasn't very smart. No, that's right. So, I don't know. Is this a G-up? This is security, yeah. security this camera This just footage. happens to be a security camera right there. Yeah. Yeah. Look, well, he probably had bloody firecrackers in his pocket or something. I'm sorry, but if that lithium-ion battery exploded in his pocket... He wouldn't be walking. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. I agree, Will. You're right. Yeah, so anyway, so that's that. <laughs> if, you, if, if you're unsure of what I mean, jump onto YouTube and, and look at uh, lithium-ion explosions and you'll see what I mean. They don't just smoke. They they do smoke, but there's flames, there's fire, there's lithium actually burning and lithium's a metal. So for metal to burn, you can imagine how hot that is. Mm. So there's, I'm sorry, but that video is just fake. Yeah, like the, probably the rest of them. But, uh, yeah, so that's there. And, look, I've got another. I think, Eric, you had a little Apple story as well, didn't you? Did you have an Apple story oh, just this week? A, uh, just another rumour. Oh, rumours. What, what rumours is rumor. that? What? Apparently the rumour is they're, they're prepping for a, a new tablet to be released in September, and this one will be a 7-inch tablet. 7-inch? Uh, yeah. That's got something to do inch. with China or something, hasn't it? Yes, it says here, component supplies in Asia are preparing for mass production in September of a tablet computer with a smaller screen than the iPad, you know, and the usual people, people familiar with the situation said. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Two of the people said that the tablet screen will likely be smaller than eight inches. Yeah, right. Um, well, in other words, the seven-inch screen. Yeah. Um, yeah. Officials at the component suppliers who declined to be named said this week that Apple has told them to prepare for mass production of the smaller tablet. You know, a 7-inch doesn't work for me. I'm sorry. Uh, smaller uh, than... Not the... for that. Not not for... Um... Yeah, I think for I've an iPhone... I've got a 7-inch here. It's, that's it. And it's just for reading. Yeah, I love my 7-inch tablets. I reckon they're great. I think they're the best size ever. Um, but for an iOS scenario where you already have... Uh, you already have um, your iPhone and you have the tablet, there's no point. I mean, you've got your two bases covered. On an Android application, I think, to be honest, 7-inch works well. But uh, I, don't, I yeah, mean, I know it. Apple like, you know, having multiple variations on things. You know, 
especially with the, you look at their uh, laptops and things like that, they have the same laptop with 47 different mm. variants. But yeah. I really can't see it being from a practical standpoint. <sighs> Well, I mean, on. if they do, fantastic. But to be honest, I really... Oh, look, they'll sell like hotcakes. And it'll be, you know, a lot of people will buy them, but it's just not for me. Mm. No. I'd rather I'd rather see the the at the iPad actually go to a more 16.9 format. Uh, aspect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I think um, that'd be more beneficial. Yeah, I don't oh, want to... Sp- speaking of 16.9, mate, Glenn. Yes. I've, I've just ordered a domain through your website. Oh, good boy. <laughs> and you um, know, you're going to love the name. <laughs> what? Six, 16 by 9com.au. Oh, as in 16x or 16by? 16 16by. 16 the number 16? Yeah. By? Yeah. 9, the number 9.com.au. Wow. I actually am quite surprised that hasn't been taken, to be honest. Me too, mate. That's why I grabbed it. <laughs> well, it is a dot com. <laughs> you beauty. <laughs> well, it is a dot au. So maybe. Yeah, what about com? So you got the au or just the com? Au. Sweet. That's a good name. I like that. I like it. There's, there's, so, our, there's you, our new you can show. Have, you can have it for a thousand bucks. <laughs> <laughs> there's our new show. Now we need these people to come up with ideas on what it should be. That's right. 16 <laughs> by 9, people. Lounge. Now, Content, ha- please. <laughs> I'm just curious, though. Would a – I know we're getting a little bit sidetracked here, but would a Apple tablet or – I mean, the iPhone obviously is already 16 by 9, but would the iPad work as a 16 by 9? I mean, it wouldn't be a 10-inch screen. It would be a – Either a nine point six or an eleven point four inch screen or something. Yeah, look, I don't know. Look, I just like I don't think I'd go any smaller than what they are. Like you know, like as you get older, your eyes well, get worse. You don't want smaller get, things. You want bigger things. To get you the same real estate, you're looking at about a thirteen inch tablet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe I'm it's... just curious. I'm, I just don't know how how it would how it would go. That's all because I mean. What's the compa- uh, not having either device? I'm, I'm asking you guys who have it. What's the actual experience difference between using an iPhone and an iPad in terms of the screen layout? Well, the um, I oh, look. I don't know. The shape's different, obviously. Mm. Um, I think the graphics uh, and the usability is probably is pretty good. That you probably don't notice the different yeah. so- screen size. I mean, given that most things, videos, photos, websites, most things these days are designed for 16 by 9. Yeah. So yeah. I'm just wondering if there's any benefit going that way or because you will have to have the tablet suddenly 13 inches long and be 9 inches wide to give you the same. Mm. You know I see what, what you're mean? saying. Like, look, yeah, look, Apple's obviously sunk about $600 billion into the design and the yeah, research. Yeah, oh, absolutely. So, yeah, that's what we've got. And look, I think it works. Look, uh, I've got the uh, smaller different configured android one now uh i still like i prefer the the shape of the ipad but anyway but talking about domain names just going back to that uh eric how easy was it oh it was pretty good the only thing the only thing where it was slowed down was um when i clicked to go to checkout yep it took um a little bit longer than it should have but once i was there everything was super fast so was the the registration from start all the way through was really quick Yep. Except for that bit when it goes to the gateway, so but that was PayPal. only that's, yeah, yeah the PayPal. PayPal. But, but that's that's a US thing. Yeah, well, but PayPal's that was just probably um, thirty seconds, and then and nice. then once you signed up on there, put all your details in, click. Yep, it was that was that was quick. It was just that uh, between gateways. That's all. But yeah, no, it wasn't a hassle. It wasn't yeah. giving me the irrits or anything. No, no. Well, you, that's just PayPal. I think it's like you log into PayPal anytime, and it's as slow as a. So yeah. Slow as a you know, yeah, it's horrible. Half flogged it? donkey. So, but any, but go, just talking back <laughs> these, <laughs> talking about these domain names. Now, iPad three dot com. Now, for the second time in two months, Apple has disputed ownership of the domain name associated with one of its products. And I fear another. I fear for the third time once I get a hold of sixteen by nine. <laughs> oh, hey, yeah. and, and Apple have got Apple have got uh, lots of cash. So um, come and pay my mortgage. Show James. me Go the money. <laughs> the company has filed a claim for iPad three. So that's iPad and the number three dot com domain with the World Intellectual Property Organization. The domain which is Breaking inactive. News. Yes. Breaking news. Oh yes. They have got the domain. They did get it. They did, but they did get it. So and so they probably now owned, now owned by Apple. Yeah, it was owned. I've got I've got who it was owned for. Uh, I've got some more here. I think. I, 
But, well, they took control of it, but I'm sure it would have cost them a little bit of cash. Yeah, the domain which is inactive. So this is where it gets easy, isn't it? Like, you can't domain squat. Yeah, I think it's right, because you're squatting. That's right. You can't just squat. So it was registered in January 2010 on the same day that CEO Steve Jobs introduced the first iPad. Yeah, so he's uh, just squatting. Seven. He's looking for money. Yeah. I've just posted the, the, the news link up into the chat there, into the Google chat. So, yeah, so, it, oh. like... You guys, if you want to go follow through with these stories as well, uh, either live or off uh, off the YouTube video or wherever, uh, show notes always up at the aussietechheads.com.au website. Just look for show notes and uh, and you'll get them all. This is where they're coming from. Uh, so uh, last month, for example, it was asked for, then was granted control of iPhone5.com, a domain that was used to host a discussion forum devoted to smartphones. So that one well, was in use. Obviously, uh, iPhone, uh, iPhone 5 is coming out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that pretty much confirms it. Yeah, in November 2011. But how does it go, like, iPhone5.com? They probably had to come from the angle, because that was, was being used as a, as a bulletin board or something. So they probably come but at the then angle. Then they'd have to pay money. They'd have, mm. If you're squatting, you probably don't get to take it off you. But if you're actually but, using it, But then these guys it. would have been infringing copyright using iPhone. So maybe they've come at it at that angle. Can't use yes, it because... Yes, true. You can't use the name. Ah, but hang on. If you're talking about copyright... Today, a Chinese court has stated that Apple Incorporated has agreed to pay a Chinese company $60 million to settle their infamous iPad name dispute. In 2006, Apple purchased the Taiwanese, Taiwanese rights to the name iPad from the company ProView Electronics. In China, however, the trademark name was still owned by ProView Technologies. Um, since 2011, ProView Technologies has battled Apple in the district court over the name. So... They never actually owned the name. They never actually owned the name iPad. They had just paid to license it. Yeah, yeah right. someone, someone, someone in the legal team screwed up on that. On that one, on the um, crossing the T's and dotting the I's because that that supposedly was supposed to go through. Mm. And, and, and someone did something, a document, and didn't, and they signed it off away. And I went, oh shit. We yeah. didn't do this. Mm. So they had to pay money. It didn't belong to them, technically. Yeah, it $60 million dollars it cost them, which is like 11 seconds trading. But, you know. Well, yeah. Well, think about it. <laughs> but apparently, now they can start selling iPads in China. They'll make that in yeah. five minutes. But That's apparently, right. At the but, opening of the next store. But apparently... Well, I'm just curious. Sorry. Yeah. I was just going to say, apparently that... Um, that Chinese company, it was called Sheshuan Taiwan or something. But apparently they, they yep. got their $60 million, But they were originally asking for $400 million. And, yeah, and, and they actually they uh, decided on 60 because they had bills to pay. They obviously really go on good, you know. <laughs> yeah, legal they, bills. Yeah, yeah so, legal bills, 59 million. <laughs> so they had to, <laughs> point nine. And they had to, uh, yeah, they had to settle because they need the money. But in November 2011, uh, Apple was also successful in a bid to acquire iPhone4s.com and seven other URLs with the iPhone name in it. So that's a copyright issue there. That's why they've got those. Yeah, you um, can't use the name of a product in your own unless you own that product. That's right. And several of which included phrases such as uh, porn, sex, and triple X. Other domains that have recently been transferred to Apple's control. So they bought iPhone 5 dot triple X. <laughs> what, I'd like to know what they're doing on that website with the phone. Well, well wouldn't we all? That's a, yeah, that's a link to a flash-based porn. Mm. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. They've also had uh, claims with the World Intellectual Property Organization uh, for names that include applestore.com, misspelt with one P. Uh, which yeah, was well a, they awarded it to Apple on May 30 and eight URLs with possible misspellings of applemusic.com, which all went to uh, Apple on June 4. So, right, um, good. Yeah, good stuff. All right, now, since we're on the topic of morons, I've got a story here. <laughs> yes. Uh, the RIM, Research in Motion, or Research No Motion, mm. the, re, the, <laughs> the CEO, the new CEO, Thornston Hines, says there is nothing wrong with the company. I'll, I'll read. I'll read on. Despite internal turmoil, massive fiscal losses, and plummeting market share, Brim CEO Thorsten Hines believes there is nothing wrong with the company as it exists right now. Hines right. pulled double duty as the public face of BlackBerry on Tuesday, appearing on a Canadian radio morning show, and then penning an opinion piece in the Globe and Mail newspaper, pushing mm. against pushing against a recent wave of negative news. Uh, Heinz emphasised that good things are on the horizon for RIM and its customers. I think it's well, time to get your butt out of the dark area. 
Yeah, I know. Extract the digit. And uh, look, you, you, you've just spent another couple of thousand dollars of Steve Gibson's money. <laughs> I think by doing that, I think um, they've, they've uh, yeah, he's going to go and buy another 57. All right. Now we're going to go and listen to Garth in a sec um, because I think the Google Hangout has, has failed. It's reloading. But we're going to go and have a, a listen to a little Garthy boy and we'll be back after Garth, obviously. G'day, everyone. This week we better, we're better we bringing you some news, some hot off the press news. Well, maybe not so much hot off the press. <laughs> but, uh, so it's lukewarm off the press news. It's, it's lukewarm. But, uh, but yeah. you know, you might not have noticed, but if you try to listen to podcasts on the iPad, uh, you may be disappointed. Why can't you? Why can't you find them? What's happened? Uh, until on. you find what app are we looking at now, Garth? Everything's changed. Well, I, iTunes aren't going to do podcasts anymore, are they? The, Apple's just decided that podcasts are, you know, not making enough money out of it. Dropped, so them, they, dropped them like a school case. Completely gone. No, that's not true. That's not right. <laughs> no, they wouldn't do that to us, would they? I hope not. No. I hope not. So, no, they've um, actually moved the podcasts out of iTunes. So, out of the music app on your phone or on your iPad. Um, I didn't think a lot of this was supposed to happen until iOS 6 was released. Um, but right now, on your iPad, there's no iTunes Pod- U yes. and there's no podcasts. Yeah, so if you want to listen to the, if you're on your iPad, now apparently Garth is still on the iPhone, yes, but it's so not on the it's iPad. still there on, under the More tab. So in the Music app, you had to go digging to find the i you know, um, your podcast. You had to go into the More tab and the bottom mm. of that was Podcasts yep. and iTunes U. And they're still there. Um, you can also download the independent. Now you can get you know the app for podcasts as well. A while ago they released the app for the iTunes U, um, but now they've got the podcast app as well. All right. So so, so nowadays you've you've got to go to the app store, download the podcasts app. That's right. So I guess when I, Apple do release iOS six, whether or not they will include the podcast app as one of the default apps that comes installed. Frankly, I doubt they will. Um, I don't know. They should. They should, but I, I think it's going to be, unfortunately, something that people are going to have to go and grab if they want to listen to their podcasts. Mm. Um, that's, that's, of course, if they're not using one of the other dedicated um, podcaster apps. But why would you think that would be? Why have they moved it out? Yeah. Is there yeah, a- I don't know. I mean, it's nice to start to de-bloat that a little bit. It hasn't helped with the... Um, you know, iTunes on the on the PC or the Mac, that's still just got every single thing happening in it. It's just huge, slow piece of yeah, but that's all right. annoying app. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess it's good on you know you know on iOS that they have started to move those things into independent apps. Mm. So um, look, there's two different layouts. There's a different uh, GUI for the iPhone and a different GUI for the iPad. Yeah. And look, the iPhone one looks pretty pretty sexy. Um, yeah, they've gone for a bit of an old style radio look to it a bit. Yeah, and then and then you've got yeah. the iPad one, which is it, which obviously can uh, get larger graphics and yeah. just looks a little bit different as well. There's so. a lovely little thing that you know with the iPad where it'll show you a reel to reel tape deck when you're listening to audio. audio. Right, right. And um, so you just do a swipe up, and there it is. And you know the wheels as you listen through a track, the tape moves from one side through to the other. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, nice. Nice. Yeah, it's a bit you know. A bit yeah, gimmicky, I guess, but it's it's you know it's nice. Yeah. yeah. So if you have, if you're wanting to wonder where's the where's my podcast on the iPad, that's what's happened. You have go to go down. The, go grab the podcast app. Go and down. Um, one thing I liked about it actually, when I installed the app, it automatically knew what podcast I'd subscribed to within iTunes itself. Right. And Good it stuff. was all set up ready to go. So I think you need to be on the latest release of iTunes as well for that to work. Mm. Yeah. So there you go. So the the requirements for the podcast app. Uh, surprisingly, would you say iPhone 3GS? Back as far as that. There you go. Uh, yeah, or the, uh, yeah, as Garth said, 5.1 or later. So uh, thanks, Garth, and uh, download that up because that's what the way of the future by the look of it. So, um, Seems to be. Yeah, if you want to keep listening to us on okay. iOS, right. download the free app from Apple. Bye bye. Excellent. See ya. Wow, that was special. There goes Garth. Another, another good little podcast from uh, review from Garth. Now, obviously, a uh, podcast uh, in a different location now with the iOS devices. Now, just going to try and uh, wait for Eric to return. We had a little Google Google Hangout crash. Um, Google had a fantastic error. It actually said, this is a fatal error. All our servers are busy. Mm. I didn't even think that was possible. 
Well, he's... all right, Google, you Googled me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else, Google was working fine. Just to hang out. Well, there you it's, go. It's that was Stephen recorded. Conroy. Conroy did that it. Was... <laughs> and I haven't even recorded live. <laughs> and I hadn't even got to bag the the Google products yet. <laughs> yeah, I know. God help us. They must preempting. They, see, they must have read the show notes. Damn that Google. <laughs> All right. So uh, yeah, Eric, uh, I was going to ask you. Uh, Garth just reviewed the podcast app for the iPad, iPhone, and iPhone. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What, I'm using it. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, good. Bad. Ugly. Oh look, it's not bad. It's a little bit slow, but that's my, that might be because it's running on the um, iOS six at the moment. I think it's available for iOS five, right? Um, but and that's obviously a little bit more robust and stable than iOS six. But it is very good. Yeah. The one one thing I don't like about it is that when you open it up, it looks like they've copied Microsoft um, tiles. You know the, oh, the okay. tiling setup. Yeah. The yeah, yeah. I'll hold it up to my camera. I don't know. I hope you can see this. Hang on a sec. It's a bit slow. Um, catalog. Hang on. So, so yeah, so they I know, this is, I know at, this is good audio. Yeah, but as Garth mentioned, uh, you can't just go, go through music and then choose podcasts from the from the or the music no, it's app a different, anymore. Different icon altogether. Correct. Mm. But it all still syncs up the same. It all syncs and oh yeah, it all syncs up the same and does and everything. The, the, the one good thing is you can subscribe directly from the app itself. Oh, okay, right, right. Because I've only got the iPad, as you know, and I don't really do listen to the podcasts off of that. Um, no, I, no, no. You'd, you'd, off the phone, you would, mm. but not off the I don't put any podcasts on the iPad either. No, so the only thing I do with the iPad is I might sync the last three videos or something that I'm interested in, and then I'll either yeah. airplay them or, you know, I can just watch them on the pad, you know, wherever I am around the place. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so that's good. I think, look, I had another Apple story here while Eric's trying to get that. I'm trying to get this up and... It's just there we go. Here we go. There you um, go. Don't know if you can see that. No, it's too bright. Yeah, but it's a bit. It's the oh yeah. It actually, it actually looks see? like the it looks like a Windows phone. But more, more disturbingly, shall we say, disturbingly, it might look actually look like the Google Store, the Play Store. Oh, good God, no. <laughs> yeah, it does. That's what I thought. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, so um, it looks like everything might be going square. The corners are being squ- squared off and uh, no more rounded. Yeah, everything's squared off. There's no more rounded icons. iPhone 5 might look like a piece of pus. It might. Might, not, might yeah. be a brick. But uh, but anyway, Apple Next Byte. Now, everyone's heard of Next Byte for sure. Uh, yes. If, if before the Apple stores were around, Next Byte was the place to go, place to hang. No. You know? Have they bit the bullet? Well, I don't think they're going too good. They're... Um, They've been in inception. They were incepted or created or whatever in 1995. Uh, they're going to rebrand 14 of the existing stores into Apple branded stores, adding to those already refurbished in Townsville, Mackay, Rockhampton, and Cairns. What does that look like? Next Byte are pretty already Apple branded because the only thing they sell is Apple. Yeah, no, but I don't know what that means. But stores would not lose the Next Byte branding completely, but the outlets fit and fixtures would mirror the interior design of an Apple store. So next byte branding. Uh, so was, they're going to have a copyright problem on their hands too, are they, for copying a store design? Yeah, look, I think this would be all um, all kosher. This would be kosher. They've been Apple and these guys have been in bed for a while. You know, oh, they, a long time. They, they've long sort time. of they've they've flown the flag for when before Apple had the stores over here at least. Like uh, even well, I've heard the, of them. The, the fact that Apple has opened up. An Apple store in every suburb that Next Byte exists. Yeah, that wouldn't piss them off much. No, well, well ne- never mind. That's all right. That's how you, that's how you treat your long long serving distributors. Well, that's why I think that, uh, that they've probably been given the okay to you know to rebrand and to, to to make it look like an Apple store and you know and just yeah. move on. Uh, Next Byte's Broadway Sydney store, which you might be familiar with, Eric, is was meters away from the new Apple outlet. Which opened. That's what I mean. Yeah. They did that in Chatswood as well. Yeah, and it will be rebranded and relocated to an, an as yet undecided new location in Sydney's inner west. Yeah, so. they have to get. You have to go somewhere where Apple isn't. Not going to get any traction at all otherwise. No. So the next bite store in Chatswood actually closed. Yeah. Uh, within within weeks, months of um, Apple well, store in Chatswood opening a couple of years ago. Well, it'd have to. But I mean, like, yeah, like, uh, yeah. Well, you know, we've got up here now uh, 
Domain, and they're calling that, you know, the next to Harvey Norman, isn't that his wife or something, Domain? Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're calling yeah. it an Apple store. I actually haven't actually been there, so I'm not actually sure if it they're is. what? Start again, they've gone what? They're calling it an Apple store. I'm not actually sure if Apple has actually opened a store there or they've just... Oh, an Apple store, an Apple area within Domain. Well, they've always had that, but well, I have to go right. and check it out. But no, as far as I am under, I'm, I'm aware, they're calling it the, an Apple store, which yeah, I'm yeah, not sure of what's going probably, on. But yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I think Gary's pulling the long straw there. Oh, Jezza. <laughs> Jezza, what are you doing? Jezza. Now, look, here's a little quick one. Power boards. Now, if you, you know, we all know and love power boards. Well, the yes. ACCC has ordered the recall of a range of Sydney's, of, of Australia, SETI electric power boards, spelt S-E-D-Y, due to their potential to administer an electric shock. So God knows how you're going to find out if you got one of these, unless you just bought one. Put your finger in it. <laughs> no, it's pretty if easy. all no, take it back. <laughs> all I did was uh, on all the new power plugs, they're required to have the top half plastic dipped so that you can't, as you're pushing the plug in, your fingers can't contact the pins as it contacts the power circuit. And all it is is the pins on the board aren't plastic dipped. So you're able to technically make contact with the pins as you're plugging it in. Yeah, okay. So it happens quite a lot. It's they just miss a batch or something like that. It happens on a lot of devices, and they have to do a full recall and change the cords. So the affected power boards were sold at Melbourne's uh, SETI Hardware in Ferntree Gully, Notting Hill between first of July eleven and first of January twelve. Models and so more information. Yeah, just go to the show notes if you think you might have bought one of those offending ones. Save yourself getting a nasty shock. Um, and another little quick one, Virgin Mobile is going to launch the 4G service this year also. They've revealed plans to offer LTE services in select capital cities, piggybacking on the Optus plans. Whoopie doo. Oh, there you go. There's the rub right <laughs> there, there. There it is. There's the, the rub. <laughs> the mobile carrier, a wholly owned subsidiary of Optus. Well, I wasn't aware of that. Will offer the services on the day of the Optus's network. Isn't, can... that, isn't that who you're with? Yes. Yeah. yeah. There you go. How's, yeah. your, how's your reception? Just hold up your phone. Just, just quickly have a geese. <laughs> One bar. Oh, actually, let's have a look. Two. There you go. Move on. Okay, you won't see it there, but oh, you might see it there. But anyway. Yeah, our, our FPOS machine at work uses Optus, and it's hopeless. You get on a valley, in a car park, in a garage, behind a wall, under a tree, you lose signal. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's it. It's just yeah. so dumb. So, yeah, the network will be built in Adelaide and Brisbane from next year, but the telco is still undergoing a tender process for a network vendor outside of Newcastle. So that's... Yeah, oh, pick me, pick me. Yeah, well, why would you bother? No, thanks. Yeah. So why would you bother? <laughs> that's right. If you, want to get, if you want to start at the uh, at the top and work your way down to the bottom, go Optus. Mm, mm. And now, uh, look, I've, anyone else got story? What, is, what else have you got there, Eric? I have got a little... You know how last week at the Google I.O., what does I.O. stand for, by the way? Input, output? I don't know. Well, Internet only? <laughs> well, that's normally what I.O. stood for, actually. I've never really gone into it myself. Well, yeah, it that's what um, I always thought it was. They were, you know how they were banging on about their glasses? You know, oh, the yes. glasses. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Apple may challenge Google with a wearable device. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, God. But it's not just rumour. It's the patent has been lodged and awarded. For a wearable display device, the wearable display device that certainly sounds and at the very least similar to Google's Project Glass. But how can there's they? A pic, yeah, how can there's they? There's a picture do of it there. Of They're the Apple. One. They've got a friend in the patent office because they put their patent in yesterday. They got approved today, and Google's still waiting on theirs. And they put theirs in three years ago. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how long that's, they put it in, but it was a water. That's how it works. But that one so there was in, a water on Tuesday. Isn't this one in I don't here? Know when they, I don't know when they put it in. So this one that we got here in the picture, is that the Apple one? That's the one? Google one. Yeah, that's, that's the, the Google, Google one. Yep. Yeah, and only the glasses is for sale. Oh, that's a shame. In that picture? <laughs> that's a shame, a damn shame. Um, yeah, so, well, I've got, look, I think I might have one more Apple story here because uh, Google Nexus. Now, Apple's going to town on their, yeah, on Samsung. Can them too. Can them as well. Yeah, now, look, I've got a little, little thing here, little story here somewhere, and... Yeah, there's... I don't know which story you've got about that, but Google is stepping in on that one, if it's the latest one. This is that Apple has successfully won the first step of a legal battle to keep Samsung's Galaxy Nexus smartphones off US shelves. 
Yeah, apparently I read somewhere that um, they've they've actually stopped selling them online at Google, and what they're doing is they're updating the software mm. so it doesn't in so it doesn't um, impinge on the on the thing that's keeping it banned, and it's all the it's the lock screen. Oh, is that it? Yeah, that's yeah. it. It's but apparently, um, Samsung, Google's going back to Apple, saying, "Hang on a minute, you don't actually own the patent to that. It was done by um, Motorola or somebody twenty years ago." So, um, I think actually done by Microsoft back when they first did their flip laptop tablety things. Oh, yeah. So, well, so maybe, I don't know how that's going to sh- that's going to uh, sort so out. So the actual patent that they claim is an infringement could possibly be an infringement so google's taking apple to court saying they don't own the patent so then any action on that patent would be on hold until it's discovered whether or not they own that patent what a joke where google right. where google <laughs> a problem where google might have a problem is the fact that apple have been using that lock screen unlock screen for five years and no one has challenged them and mm. the patent law in america is if you don't challenge that patent you lose it but how, what's the time frame? Is there well, I don't know what the time frame is, statute? but it's been five years, so it's, it might be long enough. Yeah, but yeah. Android's been using it since the first version of Android too, so that's why I don't understand what the deal is. Well, how else are you supposed well, to unlock a phone? If you can't oh, well, Android, you don't bother. You smash it on the ground and it's unlocked. <laughs> I had an old, I think it was a Motorola, tab little uh, black and white thing you needed a stylus to use. <laughs> you know, ten years ago, and it was it was swiped to unlock. So, take one and swipe. Yeah, who knows? You know, so I don't, I don't know. But yeah, um, well, that'll be an interesting outcome, actually. And I, when the decision comes down, and regardless of which side it comes down on, it's still going to be very interesting reading why they made that mm. decision because all the facts will come out then of who owned it initially and who didn't or whatever and. It'll make good reading regardless of who wins this one. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. So, so this is just a week after the Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1 was banned in the US, where Apple yep. successfully campaigned on Friday to have the Galaxy Nexus temporarily held from sale in the US, blah, blah, blah. Um, the preliminary, preliminary ban in Australia was overturned locally two months, uh, two months later, but a final ruling is yet to be issued. So, yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah well, see, that final ruling can't go ahead either until this other thing gets sorted out. So... It's just ridiculous. It really is. It gets a bit crazy. Oh, doesn't I it? Like Seriously, it. I like a if you, fight. <laughs> all it's basically saying, as far as Apple's concerned, is the only difference between their product and the Samsung product is their lock screen. That's the only thing they're scared of. <laughs> I mean, uh, what's that about? But what? Are, but what does uh, Apple I want? Think, you know what it is. It's more. It's more. I think it's more about the niggle. It's, yeah. it's just niggle. They're like a couple of seventeen-year-old schoolboys fighting over the same girl. Mm. Well, I suppose it's like the niggle because you know Jobs was so dirty. On to That's right. uh, what's his name, yeah. Eric Smith. Yeah, that yeah. I think this is all niggle. This is personal. This has got nothing to do with anything. Because Apple, Apple obviously doesn't want like any type of licensing fee for this type of thing. Well, they got so much money anyway. No, they don't. They don't but, like licensing fee. They don't believe in it. Whereas mm-hmm. Microsoft are quite happy to go. You know what? That's fine because Microsoft now get something like five dollars per every Android device sold right. on a licensing mm. fee for a for a patent infringement that over what, two years ago or something. Yeah, right. and I'll tell you what. If I could sit on my ass in Bermuda and get five bucks for every Android phone, I'd grab it. Yeah, yeah well, but, wouldn't you? You know, Motorola are the same. They, you know, they got patents on half the chipsets, Texas Instruments. That's how technology works. You pay that's somebody, right. you use their technology. Yeah, that's you it. Know, you don't. Look, that <laughs> might change. Tim, Tim Cook's a little bit more open, uh, so again, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how that goes. But is swiping a screen good enough to be paintable? Like it's a bit, well, that's it. We'll see. Well, that's a bit. We'll see. Generic, isn't but it? Tell really. us, um, Apple patent everything. They mm. patent, you know, an Apple the, with a bright tape. The they, toilet. They're trying to patent I. Yeah, the, that's you right. Know, they did. And Anything then, with the with the word I in front of it, they wanted it to yeah. belong to them. So I economy, I I business. Mm. You know, well, I mean, I there was Clown I, the car manufacturer, <laughs> have a. Their range of vans. They have the iMax, the iMove, the i. All their cars have got i. The i30, the i. Yeah. Something. They're all, well, all the their i30 cars is are... Mitsubishi. Well, but they've yeah, got a, they've got a van that's called iLoad. So that I load, should, they should I probably move. change. Yeah. Should probably change that one. <laughs> yeah, iPOS. That one but you know, the, the <laughs> stupid part is Apple was trying to chase 
all that. And it's like, well, hey, it's not even in the same industry for crying out loud. <laughs> I'm sure somebody's going to get an iPad confused with an iMove. Yeah. Look, I, I got I went out I went out this morning to go to work and I put my key in my iPad. I thought it was my car. <laughs> yeah. I can see the confusion. <laughs> but I, but I'm I'm guessing that like all big conglomerates and all big companies and all this sort of stuff, well, the lawyers they got targets. The copyright lawyers yeah. employed look, by yeah, Apple they got, got targets. Got I suppose at the end of the day they got to do it. But it's, well, it's look at hmm. Monster Cables sued Monster Golf and yeah, won. That's stupid. That's a bit crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's just stupid. Yeah, because apparently Monster Cables and Monster Gl- uh, Golf were that closely related. Well, well, you couldn't well, figure out which one was which. That's right. Well, think about it, Will. Next time I've got a TV and I'm hooking it up, um, I'll just put a <laughs> club the, at the back the of my TV <laughs> and, and I'm like, hey, it's not working. I don't understand. I'm, I'm oh, confused. Now I know why my media centre failed, see? <laughs> I right. used a Monster a Cable club. instead of a Monster Club. <laughs> That's right. It's a, it all gets just uh, beyond the joke, but um, but look, it's something that probably um, pricks my interest a little bit. Maybe not too much, but a little bit. And pro- no, it's enough. It's enough for a, for a bit of a laugh. But yeah, could you imagine if someone, whoever invented the first remote control on a TV? And I think we went over this a few weeks ago. Mm. All remotes have an off button, yeah, and a standby button, yep. and a switch to a different um, you know uh, channel on the TV as far as you know, look which output. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. And um, all whether it be Sony or or uh, you know or Blowpunk or um, you know LG, they all mm. you couldn't you couldn't for all you know all the tea in China, you know, copyright or um, protect you know intellectual property patent a remote control. Well, I mean, does that mean Alexander Graham Bell, his estate holds the patent rights to every single device, mobile device, hardwired device? Because he effectively invented communications. So it's going to be like that. Every device that talks to another device in any form technically should be belonged by his. Well, estate. whether it be him or Tesla or any of these guys, they've got it's all prior art, yeah, right? That's that's it's all it. based on prior. Well, you know what, Will? That's right. But don't. He's don't. A state. The state does hold all of that. <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> but doesn't you know, don't patents move into a, a generic and therefore they uh, expire. After yes. a while, yeah, 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 but they can be renewed. They have to be renewed, like like. Well, everything. that's but, the thing because. But then it's becoming like the Disney, the Walt exactly, Disney the Mickey copyright Mouse thing. Now. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. That's what I was getting at because Mickey Mouse was supposed to expire after fifty years. Yep. And they extended yep. it for another fifty years because it was such a beloved character. Mm. Um, and and that that next fifty years is going to be up when um, another thirty years or something, right? something yeah. like I don't know. It's it's close. It's closer than they want it to be. Oh, of course. And when that expires, could you imagine suddenly everyone's making Mickey Mouse movies and you but, know? Uh, yeah, they, it's yeah. not gonna. They're not gonna like that. And, you know, you go to you watch Shrek, the movie, and I've got all these characters that have been around for you know fifty mm. or more years. Hansel and Gretel was mm. in there. Okay. Pinocchio was in there. Um, who was the others? There's um, Jiminy Cricket. Jiminy Cricket. All these characters in Shrek, no copyright. Yeah. So they, yeah. they so they used it. The only thing that they can copyright, which is SKG Studios, is um, Shrek. That's it. But all right. the other characters, anyone can use them. Puss yeah. in Boots. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right, right. But, uh, yeah, well, yeah, so so what happens? And, but surely, as uh, the, the Disney company still say, like a going concern, well, surely they should be able to protect their interests. Interests. Yeah, but the law is you can only have a, a, a patent or a product or a registered trademark or a copyright, whatever it is that, that Disney's got on Mickey Mouse. Right, right. But it was originally for fifty years. Yeah. And they they agreed to it, and then they applied for an extension and got but it. <clears throat> you'll mm. notice that's why about every ten years they re-release Beauty and the Beast and they re-release The Little Mermaid, because just as the copyright and everything's about to expire, they do a re-release. So, so that so reactivates. They can, the they can say we're still using it. Look, we're still our product. Yeah. yeah, Lion King comes out for three weeks on Blu-ray. You know. Yeah, exactly. Because their argument is, well, you can't. You have to renew it because we, it still forms part of our business. Mm. Yeah. Well, mm. now another, uh, another thing that we mentioned last week, the Google Nexus Seven is uh, is out, and uh, look, it's coming to Australia. Yeah, the six- and it's coming to stores, which yeah, is the best part. Isn't it, uh, what, isn't it supposed to be um, online now, the Nexus 7 in Australia? Yes, is it this can. week? This week, this I week, think. Yeah. You can buy it through the through the Google Play. But the, the Nexus 7 will retail at major retailers, including good old Jezza. 
and uh, JB Hi-Fi, Dick Smith, and Asus resellers. Uh, yeah, through blah 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 through certain resellers. Uh, three hundred nineteen dollars. Uh, the announcement. Blah blah blah. They said, yeah. Wow. Well, Do, I'm sorry. I'm just reading that article. Do we have a Costco in Australia? Yeah, we do. Uh, one, we there's do? one in Melbourne and one in Sydney. Okay, because they mentioned Costco, I thought that was an American only thing. Oh no, they're in Australia now. They're massive. <laughs> the tablet, massive. The tablet is twenty dollars uh, cheaper directly through the Google Play at two ninety nine for the sixteen gig model. <laughs> the Asus spokesman said the price increase was due to costs associated with shipping the tablet to Australia. Wow. Oh mm. bull, that's crap. It's all made in China, and it goes yeah. from China to the US. It's the same distance as China to here. Mm. It's both ten hours on the bloody plane. Send them. Yeah, because a uh, a container costs a lot more to send half full as it does full. Yeah. Yeah. No, you know what it is? It's our ports in Australia are inefficient, and it takes longer to, and longer and and co- more costly to unload a, uh, a a container in Australia than it does in the US. Mm, probably. Yeah, that's probably true too. But anyway, there it is, the seven incher. Yeah, is. So you're going to get the seven incher? Because you you, have, no. you probably don't have a seven incher. Probably could do with one. No, I could probably. I've got two. I've got two seven inches. Oh, oh, I would, you're lucky. I wouldn't mind upgrading. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, no, it's. <laughs> I wouldn't mind extending it to the seven. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. No, it's um <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm not gonna get one. I've already I've already got that other so, Android so, one. I've got the other so week. where do I um where do I get that from? Well from Google the something? From Google the play, play from play or through the the bricks and mortar. Oh, okay. Oh here it is. Pre order. Pre order? Yeah, but it'll be what? shipped this month, I think. I think it's coming yeah, out. Yeah. It's Oh, it's, okay. It's been shipped. But it's basically waiting on. Uh, from actually, what I've heard, they're waiting on customs to clear it. It's sitting in customs, apparently. Yeah, there you go. To... There's my point exactly. Mm. Mm. There you go. Oh, well, hang on. This is interesting. Hang on. Let's see. That's no, two ninety nine if you order it from Google Play, uh, plus shipping. Yeah, and I think shipping's twenty bucks. Yeah, so there's your three twenty. And it's three nineteen for the sixteen gig version from the retailers. So. Yeah. Well, this one's the same then, including shipping. Mm. Yeah, but yeah. I get I understand that with a retailer why they charge twenty dollars more because to be honest that would be the twenty dollars the retailer gets because Google's yeah. oh, probably look, look. making not enough out of it. Apparently they're making virtual. Uh, there's actually I've got a story on it here. Google came out and said, "Look, we're making nothing on it. We're making it to show you what yeah. can be." So I well, would say that the, twenty dollars. Here's the cost shops. here. It says the preliminary cost comes in at about one hundred and eighty-five bucks. Right. So, so they're making um well they're making a reasonable amount of money. Ninety bucks. In, Ninety dollars. In the US. Well yeah. it, but just remember it's only two forty nine into the US. Yes. That's right. So yeah, between yeah, that's right. So that's hundred and eighty four US selling for two forty nine. So they're just making slightly over sixty, seventy dollars on that. Mm. Well apparently if you go in store, um there's a twenty five dollar Play Store credit you get. Sorry, if you order it through the Play Store, you get a twenty-five dollar Play Store credit, so you can buy other apps and stuff. So I guess that knocks twenty-five bucks off the price, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Better than kicking the pants. Yeah, good stuff. All right, uh, Eric, did you have any more stories you wanted to? What, uh, what else have you got in your little list here? Little list. Oh, here. Apple. Yeah, Apple Just, drops claim that Macs don't get viruses. I think we've done that. We one. did that, but they've made it official now. <laughs> oh, okay, right. Uh, Google goes head to head with 3D maps. Oh, Will, yes, you've got um, something there. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know if you guys remember, about 12 months ago, I was ranting about the uh, actor um, clause that they're trying to implement, which is the anti counterfeiting trade agreement. Basically, what it was was an under the table international handshake um, to basically make every, every country in the world um, c- effectively can be controlled by. Supposedly impartial, um, I guess, police force government to pull down any sites or any content or fine people for yeah, anywhere like in that. the world for anything. Don't like that. Um, yeah. Well, the good news is earlier today, I think it was earlier today, might have been last night, um, the UK said go away. Um, so that was a good start, which probably means that we're going to follow suit. Um, the European Parliament voted 478 to 39 to reject it. Good. Um, so those 39 people 
have been named, and I'm pretty sure we're getting some nasty emails. Oh, I'm pretty sure Australia's <laughs> on that 79. I know you're getting it. Conroy would have been the first person to sign it, the creep. No, yeah. Australia hasn't voted on it yet. Um, oh, that's right. They're still deciding how to get the um, how to get over there because all the <laughs> votes have been taken up. They're they're supposedly voting on it at the end of the month. Um, but <laughs> don't rush. Whatever you do. <laughs> It's well. It's been going for about four years, five years now. So yeah, they're not happy sort overseas. Of, no, but uh, the the biggest problem is now. There's a couple of these other ones coming in. There's one called uh, the Australian Law Reform Commission. Yep. Um, which is supposedly getting their two cents worth in now as well. So, what are they reforming? The, the law. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> according to them. Well, they're making it, yeah. Uh, they're, they're not happy. It's a... They, they want to do, you know, the, the three strikes you're out business. They, um, you know, with... Uh, well, it's not even that, see. With the actor, they don't need that. The actor is literally... You can shut someone down for them. on suspicion. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you don't need proof. You don't need authority. You don't yeah, need anything. Uh, all you need is an accusation. That's so, so, so Orwellian. Yeah. That is, well, that's is what, disgusting. Yeah, and that's what most of the countries voted against it. And I, I don't well, know. It's you know it's guilty well, until proven innocent. That's ridiculous. Of course, the states you know agreed to it, and a couple of other countries agreed to it straight away. But what happened was it was only about twelve months ago, eighteen months ago, it sort of leaked out into the public eye, and what people generally got upset about was the fact that prior to that, for two years before that, it um, it was hidden. It was all this you know underground thing and countries like australia have actually signed the treaty but they haven't ratified it but now the thing is they they must have signed it on christmas eve one mm. year which so when everyone's on holiday so that we wouldn't pick up on it pretty much exactly yeah, and, a, but that's the thing they haven't ratified it because they're not game because what they yeah. don't realize is that they're based you know it's not only going to affect every person in the country, it's going to affect the government as well because mm. it basically means there'll be no more government secrets because if it's online, it's accessible. Yeah, That's right. Or I can accuse the government of spying on me or what other thing. Shut and down. then it suddenly it shuts down, you know, the tax office website. Let's do that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, I don't talk about tax. It's all that's, I've got to do mine now. Now that's the end of the, end of the month. Oh, mate, I tell you what, the minute... It clicked over because, you know, June 30 finished on, on the weekend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Monday morning, the emails, <laughs> mate, the emails. Yeah. And, you all, got smashed. and the, all my biggest clients are sending all their stuff in, and they're mm. huge clients. Yeah. Um, and it's smashed. good. I'm happy with that because, um, you know, more clients, more, the big clients come in early, more money for me. Oh, that's right. Um, yes. And I tell you what, it's been non stop. Yeah. Non stop. Well, that's good. Lots of people making money. Good for, yeah. good, good for all those accountants out there. <laughs> All right, so, uh, yes, well. Uh, I was just going to say quickly, too, um, was it over the weekend? We had the um, leap second to recalibrate all the clocks. Oh, okay. Uh, it, it, and basically, it killed the internet. Um, Reddit, well, Gorka, LinkedIn, Quant- Foursquare, Yelp. Yeah, yeah Qantas. Um, Qantas was Qantas, down. <laughs> but that's so it. many websites yeah. just died because apparently one leaps one leap second just it didn't mesh. Oh, Nobody bothered to security. Apparently, been having a blood. He would have talked about that this week too. I'm sure. <laughs> it was it's just amazing reading. I won't go through them all now, but go through just search for you know leap second chaos or something like that, and it's just amazing the amount of drama it caused. So, so the clocks went what forward or back? Uh, Twenty forward. The leap second was added to the electronic clock at midnight universal time on Saturday, with atomic clocks reading twenty three hours fifty nine minutes and sixty seconds before then moving on to Greenwich Mean Time. So that's what happened. They actually instead of going fifty nine sixty o, it went fifty nine sixty sixty one. Yeah. So. Yeah. That's actually what happened. Yeah, they, they skipped one second. Yeah, well, happy to say the Aussie right. Techhead server stayed up and running and pumping. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I got a, I got a uh, alpha host who our radio is supposed to be through. Well, it doesn't work. They sent me an email saying, "Sorry, our website's been down for the last forty-eight hours." 
Right. Um, and then they sent me another email today saying that Australian servers still aren't up yet and they don't know when they will be. Oh, well, let's get off them. Beautiful. <laughs> That's why the radio. That's why the radio hasn't been uh, advertised lately because it's not working. We've got to find another host for that. We're working yes. on it. We're working on it. Well, I think I think that just brings us to the uh, the close of the show. So, um, any more? Unless there's any more boys, you got anything else going on, Alton? Oh. No, I'm good. I'm good. 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 I'd good. Lo- Do you guys remember the old uh, bricks from the uh, the 80s? The old Motorola bricks. Yes. Handsets. Yep. Yes. You know, there's, there's a guy who's uh, remaking them as Bluetooth headsets for your phone. So you carry a normal iPhone or whatever in your pocket, and then you can walk around with the. They're forty five, forty bucks. You can walk around with a, an old eighties brick. <laughs> you know <laughs> what? Actually, you know what I found funny. You know what else you can do as well? <laughs> there's this thing. It's so funny. For, again, it's for the iPhone. You slip it in your car. It clicks into your car. And then you get, you know, those old, um, what do you call it? You know, the old telephones you pick up when it's the wired? The corded phones, yeah. Your corded phone, but the old style, really heavy yeah. and black one? Yeah, you yeah. Plug that in. <laughs> <laughs> and you s- <laughs> plug that into your iPhone. Uh, that's pretty trendy. Yeah, the old in-car, the old in-car yeah. phones, yeah. 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 yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, all right. Well, that's. Uh, I think that's um, about all we've got for tonight. So, um, so thanks for coming in, and thanks for listening. Thanks for downloading. It's the uh, the um, Twitter is me at Aussie Techheads, Eric at Eric with a K Franco, and William at um, where are you, Will? Mister Tomkinson. I think that's. Right. Uh, yeah. That's oh right. yeah. <laughs> That'll do. That'll do. That'll do for this week. Now, don't forget, people, hosting dot aussietechheads.com.au That's right. So if you go there, have a bit of a poke around. Um, look, there's a couple of things that i just got to tidy up on the home screen, but look, everything works sweet. As you, as you know, Eric has already registered a domain through the show. That's how easy it is. That's how yeah. easy it is. So good on you, Eric. Uh, all right. So apart from that, uh, go check that out, and we'll obviously see you all this same time next Thursday night if you want to watch us live, or you'll hear us on the podcast uh, next time you download it. So until then, it's uh, good night from all of us. Bye-bye. See you. Bye. Ciao.